Hey everyone, this is Danny, and welcome to this update video. I trust and hope that you're doing really fantastic and we're going to be taking a look at what is going on across the Atlantic. So there is all that activity which is impacting portions of the, south, uh, the southeast US, especially the state of Florida. We'll be taking a look at that. We'll be talking about what is happening across the Caribbean, what is expected today as it relates to rainfall activity. And then out in the main development region, there is now tropical depression. Sean. So Sean is struggling with the share and we'll also be talking about Invest 94L, which is the tropical wave that may approach the Caribbean and try to develop. And so let's get straight into it and we're kickstarting things looking at portions of the Southeast US. And so here we have this infrared satellite imagery. We're taking a closer look here. Uh, there's even that uh, tornado threat for some areas across Florida. So all this activity is moving through, likely bringing some stormy weather, some periods of heavy rainfall. And eventually, as it makes its way out, other areas such as Bermuda could experience some inclement weather conditions from the system. Those gusty winds, periods of very heavy rainfall as well. So that's what's going on for the area. Next, we're going to uh, the Caribbean. So let's take a look at the region. And here we can see that there isn't much happening at all. So for most areas, pretty clear. It should be a beautiful morning. And as we head to the afternoon hours, maybe some showers popping up here and there. There, but nothing crazy is expected across the islands for the most part as I speak about that let's go on to this map here let's go on to the rainfall uh, map coming from the euro model so this is as we head through today and into the very early morning hours of tomorrow we can see Florida with some of those higher rainfall totals same story as we head over into parts of Central America especially near the Pacific coast of the various countries so it's pretty colorful which indicates that a lot of heavy rainfall is likely across some areas for most of the islands though we're seeing some spots of that paler shade of green so again there could be some showers and thunderstorms popping up here and there for the most part it should be a sunny day but uh, these rainfall totals, the chance of rainfall activity, it significantly decreases as we head to the Southeast Caribbean, going to Aruba, Curacao, Bonaire, as well as even Trinidad and Tobago as well, and down in portions of Northeastern South America. So the Guyanas, much is not expected as we head through today, likely to be a very, very sunny day. And again, that rainfall chance, pretty low. And now we're heading out into the main development region to talk about these two systems. So there is Sean as well as that next system, Invest 94L. It is called an invest because it is an area of investigation. It's been closely watched for development. And so let's first talk about Sean. So the center of Sean is right there. And if you look very closely, you can see that circulation. So what is happening is that it is a very shared storm. It is not strong. It's not sustaining tropical storm force winds anymore based on satellites. And there you can see all that activity kind of disorganized in association with the system. So looking at the latest cone forecast from the National Hurricane Center, here you can see it. So tropical depression, Sean, and it is sustaining maximum winds of around 35 miles per hour and making its way to the U.S. Northwest at 12 miles per hour. So we see that the system may dissipate as soon as this weekend. So uh, it might not last very long out there. Pretty similar to what the Euro model has been pretty consistent about with the system not becoming anything much and just making its way out to sea. So the chance of any impacts for the Caribbean are getting pretty much unlikely as it relates to Sean. However, that isn't the main concern, but it is rather Invest 94L. Let's talk about it. So going back to the satellite imagery there, you can see that little blob to the south east of the Cabo Verde the Island. So that is in association with the disturbance and imminent development is not expected. As we look at this latest graphic from NHC, we can see that this continuous westward track is expected of the system. It's been expected since it was uh, marked as a disturbance and so it continues. Now as for what models have to show, we're going to quickly take a look at the uh, model guidance. So let's go on to the track guidance. Here we can see that the tracks are all showing that westward trend as well, even in this morning's update. And then as it relates to intensity, 
conditions are not likely to be highly conducive right now to allow for the system to quickly develop within, say, a couple of days. But as we're going to be heading into next week, that may be the time when it actually acquires tropical cyclone status, maybe becoming a tropical depression, even a tropical storm. And then it could be close to the Caribbean. So it could be just before the system decides to enter the Caribbean if it makes its way in when it acquires tropical depression or tropical storm status. And so there's still a little chance of that happening. There's a 30% chance, but I mean, the system is way out there just off the African coast. It has quite some time to travel across the main development region. So as the days go by, as we head into this weekend and into next week, we'll have a better picture of what is happening with it. And if it is that the system is going to be taking advantage of the conditions and it's evident that it is uh, trying to organize, then that formation chance will continue to increase. But we see here that most models are expecting that this may become a tropical cyclone maybe around the next five days or so. So definitely watching for next week. And as we even take a look at ensemble tracks for GFS and Euro, let's first go on to Euro. So this is as we're going to be heading out into next Wednesday. There are those tracks for uh, Sean, whatever is left off the system, moving out. A couple of these members want to take it on that westward track, but the majority are expecting that it will dissipate. And those tracks also for uh, the disturbance that is affecting Florida, previously known 93L. So there are all those tracks for 94L, which is that tropical wave. And this is as we're going to be heading out into next Saturday. Take a look at this. We're seeing that majority of these are showing that it may become at least a tropical depression and maybe a problem for the Caribbean. And we're even seeing a couple of low pressure areas being marked over there in the Western Caribbean. Not a whole lot of agreement on something developing, but some models have been hinting at that actually happening. As we take a look at what the GFS has to show, we're seeing somewhat of a similar picture here. A lot of these members want to take the system a bit closer to the Caribbean. And then as for Sean, a couple of them uh, showing that it will try to sustain itself, maybe eventually restrengthened into a tropical storm and moving west so low confidence on that happening and uh, we're seeing all these tracks again for 94 l a couple of members highlighting the western caribbean that we may see something try to form over there but no guarantee of that happening now as it relates to conditions we're looking at this dry air map we can definitely see that there is some dry air out ahead of sean and across the caribbean so all this dry air is kind of helping to stabilize environmental conditions so that is why there isn't a whole lot of activity going on or expected right now it's not a very unstable environment to support a lot of shower and thunderstorm development so that's not the case Case. There we have 94L out of there, so it may eventually try to get itself together, potentially becoming a tropical cyclone as we're going to be heading into next week. Again, it could be on approach to the Caribbean, so it's definitely something to watch, and I'll definitely be keeping you guys posted on it. So that is pretty much what I wanted to share with you in this update, and I hope that you found it to be quite informative. And if you have any questions, as per usual, you can always leave them in the comments. I'll respond to you once I get the chance to do so and remember to always be weatherwise.